This is a place where it only takes a second to imagine your future. Grasp a new concept in class. Inspire a child's curiosity. Discover a real world solution. Seize an unexpected opportunity. There goes Davis. This is where you gain the preparation, confidence, and determination to succeed. This is Auburn. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Injuries plague Auburn football while the college football playoff rankings were released. With football nearing its end, basketball is just heating up. All this and more coming up on Sports Night in Auburn. Good evening and welcome to Sports Night in Auburn. I'm Hayden Desmond. And I'm Kennedy McKnight. Thank you for joining us tonight. The college football playoff rankings were officially released on Tuesday on ESPN. Auburn came in at number 14, the highest ranked two loss team in the poll. We'll give you the full breakdown of the rankings later this evening. Some other news for the Tigers came in Tuesday. Gus Malzahn announced that running back Cameron Petway will be out for an extended period of time due to a fractured scapula. Petway suffered the injury late in the game against Arkansas. Petway will avoid surgery and Malzahn, Malzahn says Cam Martin, Malik Miller and Devin Barrett will quote, all be ready to go down the stretch. Malzahn hopes to get Petway back before the end of the season. I mean, that is awful. We have been trying to have Kerryon Johnson and Petway healthy together. And we saw great glimpses of Petway this past game at Arkansas of last year and how strong he was, the defending SEC champion of rushing in my book. And he just came off an injury, so you feel for a guy like that who's constantly hurt. You just want to see him on the field. Exactly. Well, some good news for Auburn sports. Basketball is ready to tip off their season. Auburn is set to play their preseason game Thursday against Barry. Eagle Eye's Sarah Polcheski sat down with Coach Bruce Pearl to talk about his upcoming season. You know, there are 14 teams in our league. I'd say all 14 think they got a chance to go to the NCAA tournament, including Auburn. First time I've been the coach at Auburn where I've actually said, you know, I think we get to the NCAA tournament. I think we can compete for the league championship. The challenge is... The league feels that way, too, because the league is that good. I say we get seven, maybe eight teams in the NCAA tournament this year. That's how good the conference is, top to bottom. But this is by far the best team that I've had since I've been at Auburn. Now, your first real test could potentially be in the second round of the Charleston Classic against Temple. How will that game that early in the season possibly affect the rest of the season? Yeah, well, Temple's got... Later this evening... Hear what all Coach Pearl had to say about his team and, of course, football. After the break, soccer heads to Orange Beach to make a run for a title. More after this. If you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Nice Only you can prevent wildfires.
see on page four that the projections need to be tornado next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. It's tournament time for soccer. The Tigers were awarded the number six seed in the SEC tournament facing number three, Florida Tuesday. Soccer defeated Florida 1-0 earlier this season, but could not pull another win off in Orange Beach. The Tigers fell to the Gators 1-0 in the quarterfinals of the tournament. The Tigers now must wait to see if they will be in the NCAA tournament. Auburn welcomed the Crimson Tide Friday for the Iron Bowl in the pool. The Tigers split the duel with the Tide with the number nine men's team defeating the Tide. Luis Martinez, Hugo Gonzalez, and Scott Lazaroff led the Tigers with two wins each. Ali Tetzloff remains unbeaten for the Auburn women despite the overall team loss. Volleyball was back on the road this weekend, traveling to South Carolina for a late season SEC matchup. The Tigers pulled together to tally another road win defeating the Gamecocks 3-1. Brenna McElroy posted a career high 17 kill and 17 digs for her fifth double-double of the season. Alexa Philly followed behind McElroy recording her 12th double-double of the season with 48 assists and 12 digs. Softball was back on the diamond to close out their fall season play Sunday. The Tigers once again stole the show, shutting out both Central Alabama Community College and Columbus State. Auburn's defense allowed only five hits in 13 scoreless innings. When we come back, a look at other Auburn sports. What you missed this week after this. Fans direct your attention to the flagpole for a special presentation. You never really leave Auburn because Auburn never leaves you. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. I hope that you've been able to learn a strong work ethic surrounded by character, integrity, perseverance, so that when your one second comes, you'll be prepared for it. Chris Davis. 45, there goes Davis! Your one second, our one second is now. And our lives have been guided by the principles of one of the greatest academic institutions in the country, Auburn University. Auburn women's tennis sophomore Taylor Russo finished runner-up in the singles final at the ITA Southern Regional Championship Monday at the Yarborough Tennis Center. Russo faced Ariane Hartono of Ole Miss in the singles final. After dropping the first set 6-1, Russo fought back in a well-played back-and-forth second set that was tied at four games apiece before Hartino claimed the final two game to win 6-4. Coleman Churchrich headlined cross country Friday for the SEC champions in Athens, Georgia. Churchrich ran a personal best to finish in 17th place in the 8K, helping the men's team capture 9th place. The women placed 11th with Joyce Kimmelly leading the Tigers, finishing 28th. This week's Auburn Player of the Week is Taylor Russo. She's a sophomore tennis player and finished runner-up in the singles final at the ITA Southern Regional Championships Monday. Russo is one of 11 SEC women players that will compete in the ITA National Championships. 
When we come back, our sports director, Sarah Polcheski, breaks down Auburn football. Sarah P's Fast Five after this. You're watching Eagle Eye TV, Auburn's news leader. This is a place where it only takes a second to imagine your future. Grasp a new concept in class. Inspire a child's curiosity. Discover a real world solution. Seize an unexpected opportunity. There goes Davis. This is where you gain the preparation, confidence, and determination to succeed. This is Auburn. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Auburn was on a break this week, but I wasn't. I break down your now number 14 Auburn Tigers to give you my Fast Five. Good evening, I'm Sarah Poljeski. Thanks for joining me. Auburn is coming off their bye week and got some much needed rest. While the Tigers had a weekend off, I decided to put together what I believe are the five best moments so far in the 2017 season. So let's get started. Number one, the Stidham Sombrero. One of the newest Auburn traditions is for the players to go into the stands for the alma mater following the game. This tradition has become one of my favorites, but I feel the alma mater after the Ole Miss game was the best because quarterback Jarrett Stidham found a new hat. While on the stands, a fan decided to put on a sombrero on Siddham's head, and he decided to absolutely rock it. It seemed to be one of Siddham's favorite moments, too. This moment was probably the most lighthearted moment of the season and provided some good laughs. For number two, my favorite trick play of the season, the flea flicker against Arkansas. This play is by far and away the best executed play I've seen Auburn run. They were able to switch up their signature play, the buck sweep, to turn the touchdown into a thing of beauty. Here's why this play is a true piece of art. Siddham hands off the ball to Johnson, making Arkansas think they're going to run it outside like many of their sweeps do. But they add in some flair right here. Johnson flips the ball to Ryan Davis, who doesn't reverse it, but throws it downfield to Darius Slayton, who would use his speed to take it to the house. This new trick to their old trade made for a perfect touchdown, and in my opinion, the best play run by the offense all season. For number three, I want to highlight my favorite wide receiver play. The quick out pass turned 75 yards against Ole Miss. In this play, Ryan Davis showed his speed, agility, and his downright good game sense to turn a quick pass into a long touchdown run. Here's what made this one one of the best wide receiver plays by Auburn. Siddham fakes the handoff and hits Ryan Davis for the quick out pass. Ryan dodges a defender, takes it down the sideline, continues, cuts past another defender into the middle of the field, sees another defender, cuts past him, and keeps on going to take it in for the Auburn score. I love watching that touchdown over and over again because you get to see the same amount of excitement watching Davis take off for the score. Now for the most memorable defensive play of the season for number four. The fumble recovery and return by Marlon Davidson against Mizzou. When watching the game, I had to laugh at the fact Davidson was the only player on the field to realize the ball was live. And there's always something to be said to watch a defensive lineman run the ball the other way. Here's what made this moment so memorable to me. Mizzou's trying to answer Auburn's score, but Jeff Holland won't have it. Sacks him and strips the ball. The ball's out, sits on the ground for a while. Nobody knows what's going on, and then Marlon Davidson realizes it's a free ball, 
picks it up and takes off downfield to at least the 20 yard line for the Tigers. For me, there was no better sight than seeing Davidson run down the field trying to beat Mizzou's fast ride receivers. Finally, for my fifth favorite moment of the season, carry on Johnson in the Wildcat formation. For some reason, I love to see a running back go under center and take control of the game. And carry on Johnson knows how to read a defense and turn his Wildcat offense into big plays. This touchdown shows how. Carry on in the Wildcat formation with Sidham looking to be his running back. Carry on takes the direct snap for Auburn, sees what's ahead of him, finds the hole, and plows into the end zone for the Auburn touchdown. Johnson has been so effective in the Wildcat this season. I look forward to see what other plays he can draw up later this season. Well, those are my fast five for this week. To get my five takeaways and five keys to victory, visit our website, eagleeyeauburn.com, on Mondays and Fridays to catch my thoughts. Up next, we take a look at what's going on in the pros. Your national sports update after this. This is a place where it only takes a second to imagine your future. Grasp a new concept in class. Inspire a child's curiosity. Discover a real world solution. Seize an unexpected opportunity. There goes Davis. This is where you gain the preparation, confidence, and determination to succeed. This is Auburn. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Football Playoff Committee released their first poll of the year, and it may surprise you. The committee placed Georgia number one, followed by Alabama, Notre Dame, and Clemson. The Auburn Tigers are 14th behind Virginia Tech and Washington and a touch schedule ahead. They have a chance to impress the committee late in the season. Auburn looks to see that they could make their way into the top four with two teams finished, two finished left in SEC play in Georgia and Alabama. We really do hope for that, Hayden, but we need Auburn to stay consistent, and it all depends on our game this coming weekend and next weekend against the Georgia Bulldogs. Definitely. We hope to have one of those spots in Atlanta for the SEC championship game. We do. The location for the 2021 through 2024 College Football National Championship games have been announced. The four cities include Miami, Indianapolis, Los Angeles, and Houston. This will be the first time any of these cities hosted the championship under the new playoff system. The World Series ended on Wednesday, and what a spectacular series it was. Absolutely. The series featured amazing pitching, big home runs, and an enthusiastic crowd every night. In the end, the Houston Astros were able to take the series and bring home their first World Series trophy in franchise history. You know, neither of these teams has won a championship in 29 years. The Astros won. It was definitely a back and forth series, and I'm really happy to see Houston get a trophy. I am very happy for them. And, you know, this game really did show a lot about you, Darvis, and how he's going to play in future games and what it's going to leave um, with the team and a great pitcher. Up, Sarah Polchesky's exclusive interview with Coach Bruce Pearl. Fans direct your attention to the flagpole for a special presentation. <laughs> you never really leave Auburn because Auburn never leaves you. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. 
the little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. <coughs> I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. I hope that you've been able to learn a strong work ethic surrounded by character, integrity, perseverance, so that when your one second comes, you'll be prepared for it. Chris Davis. 45, there goes Davis! Your one second, our one second is now. And our lives have been guided by the principles of one of the greatest academic institutions in the country, Auburn University. The cloud of the FBI investigation is still looming over Auburn basketball, leaving many unknowns for the upcoming season. With the Tigers tipping off Thursday for the first time since the arrest of Chuck Person, Eagle Eye's Sarah Polcheski sat down with Coach Bruce Pearl to talk about something that has been overlooked in the past weeks, basketball. All right, Coach, your 2017-2018 schedule just came out. How do you feel about it? It's, it's challenging. Um, it's going to prepare us for sure. Uh, first starting in the non-conference, um, to be able to go to Charleston and play in a tournament with really good teams and great coaches um, and, a, and, a, and a spot that our fans can get to, that, that's a, a, a great way to start, a great litmus test for where we are. And our league needs to win big games in the non-conference against big opponents. And so we'll have a couple of chances to be able to do that. Um, the, the, uh, the fact that we're playing a couple of true road games, going to Murray State, and uh, going to Dayton, two teams that are almost always in the NCAA tournament. Again, within reach of our fan base. And then the home schedule highlighted really by, by UAB coming back in, and, and, I, and I love that series. We won two against the two in a row, but I think by a total of three points, they're always great games. And then UConn, uh, to have one of the, really in the last couple of dec decades, one of the best programs in college basketball coming into our building December 23rd, right before Christmas. That's, uh, that's awfully exciting. And I saw it was announced it's going to be on ESPN2, the game. How's it gonna be, how is it going to be for your players to play on that big of a stage against UConn on ESPN2 that day? It, it's something that the guys are going to look forward to, no doubt, and probably be more than anything. When you play December 23rd, you want to have a Merry Christmas. So our guys, both teams are going to be extremely motivated to try to win that game. We beat UConn at UConn last year at the Hartford Center, which was a great win for us. Um, and so last year we did our job in the non-conference. We were 11-2 and two last year in the non-conference with some great wins, um, but did not get it done in conference play. And, uh, you know, there are 14 teams in our league, I'd say, all 14 think they got a chance to go to the NCAA tournament, including Auburn. First time I've been the coach at Auburn where I've actually said, you know, I think we get to the NCAA tournament. I think we can compete for the league championship. The challenge is the league feels that way too because the league is that good. I say we get seven, maybe eight teams in the NCAA tournament this year. That's how good the conference is top to bottom. But this is by far the best team that I've had since I've been at Auburn. Well, you know, I just spoke with Austin Wiley. He just came back from playing with coach, under Coach Calipari. How is that going to affect you guys? Will that give you an edge against Kentucky and possibly getting that home win this year again? <laughs> you know, I'm going to try to motivate Austin. I mean, he loved playing for Cal, but I'm going to tell him, I said, how many times did Cal get you the ball? He didn't get you the ball, man. All those Kentucky guys got the shots. I'll figure some way to motivate Austin to try to go – be Coach Calipari, he's got great respect for Cal, for Cal and, um, and really enjoyed, obviously, playing for him. But Austin's trying to, he's trying to make history. He's trying to build a legacy like his dad had as the leading rebounder in the SEC his senior year, like his mom had as somebody took the Auburn women's basketball to the Final Four a couple times and was an Olympian and an All-American. So Austin's got big shoes to fill, and in order to fill those big shoes, he knows he's got to do something special. Yeah, certainly beating Kentucky would be very special. And with the loss of um, T.J. Lane and Ronnie Johnson, how is do you think Wiley and Heron can step up and be the leaders on the team and pick up the slack where we lost in, where you lost an age? I, I I think that our strength is going to be our depth. Um, 
even though we have no seniors, we have got a lot of experienced guys. Um, only true, two true freshmen. Last year we played five, this year just two. But both Davion and Shuma are physical enough to be able to contribute and handle that. Um, I like our experience. I like our physicality. Uh, we're talking one of our themes this year is Auburn strong. And uh, it's because our guys have paid the price in the weight room. You'll see that you, know, you, you interviewed Austin. You saw his body. He's a big man. And he has worked really hard to develop his body for power, for speed. Uh, and uh, and, and, and um, he's got a chance to dominate in our league. Now, your first real test could potentially be in the second round of the Charleston Classic against Temple. How will that game that early in the season possibly affect the rest of the season? Yeah, well, Temple's got uh, just a great program, a great coaching staff, and they've got a pro. Um, and so those are three, you know, things that are – you're going to have to deal with They've been to the NCAA tournament seven out of the last ten years. I understand that. I, I just Our guys are motivated, and we'll just simply take it one day, one day at a time. And, you know, you're going to see, you know, from Fran Dunphy at Temple, you're going to see certain things. The night before against Indiana State, you're going to see certain things. Norfolk State in our home opener the night before the Georgia game. We just got to be able to take it one day at a time. And more than anything, just keep getting better throughout the season. That's the biggest thing is just let's just keep getting a little better because a lot of teams don't. Absolutely. So you're also another huge road test is at Dayton. If they can win on, if Auburn can win on the road, what does that say about the rest of the season going forward before you even get into SEC play? We won six true road games last year. That was, I think, one shy of whoever won the most road games. I'm not sure it was maybe Arkansas or somebody. Six road games were right there. Uh, we're going to Dayton because that's the first round of the first four. That's a, that's a program that's got unbelievable history and tradition in college basketball and a tough place to play. But um, I don't want my first road game being at Tennessee on January 2nd where we open up the SEC schedule. So it's a good opportunity. And, um, you know, again, our guys will prepare. Uh, I would say this more than anything. I think our focus is going to be, look, you're going to have to deal with us more so than I'm going to be worrying about dealing with you. Awesome. So I have to add in, football starts this weekend. What are your predictions for the football team this year? They're going to be as good as they're capable of being. Whatever their ceiling is, they're going to reach it. I don't know what that ceiling is. None of us as fans do. But I'm going to support them. I mean, I'm going to the Georgia Southern game. Georgia Southern, those teams early in the season, they're dangerous because they've got depth and we don't know a whole lot about them. And, um, you know, it's going to be an interesting matchup. They, they, they run the option and, and, and something that you don't see all the time. So I've already talked to Coach Steele. He tells me he's got the pitch man covered. We're good. And then I'm going to Clemson with several members of my coaching staff. Yeah, we've got to go. And we've got to support our guys. And obviously, it's going to be a great moment. We come back and play Mercer at homecoming. We'll be there. Excited about that. I think the next game, not even me at Missouri, and I'm going to the Missouri game. So I think I've got, I think I've got uh, our team on my schedule for their first four Saturdays. I'm a fan. I love Coach Melzon, his coaching staff. He's been a great friend. And uh, I got his back and he's got mine. Awesome. Is there anything else you would like to add about this coming season, football, anything? I think the, the biggest thing would be that just, just the biggest changes we've made is this has become a tough place to play, Auburn Arena. We have not always finished the job, and we're going to try to finish the job more often, but it's exciting, and it's a tough ticket. If you got them, use them. If you don't have them, give them away, because the demand for tickets to Auburn Arena is, is at an all-time high. The second thing is, look at the schedule. Where can you go? Is Paducah, Kentucky too far out of the way? Or Birmingham, when we play Middle Tennessee, a team that won 31-4 and four last year. Or going to Dayton, to, to their facility. So get to Charleston. Take, help us take the show on the road. And if I could get our Auburn basketball fans to travel, then that'll be one of the next real hurdles in the development of our program. Awesome. Thank you so much, Coach. War Eagle. War Eagle. There is so, still no definite on the fate of the Auburn basketball program, but for now, their season will continue as planned, beginning play November 10th against Norfolk State. After the break, we'll take a look at what's ahead for the Auburn Tigers. Stay tuned. You're watching Sports Night in Auburn on Eagle Eye TV, Auburn's news leader.
you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Ah, Smokey! Only you can prevent wildfires. see on page four that the projections need to be tornado next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Football is back from their bye weekend, and plenty of Tiger teams are ready to start their seasons. We have everything you need to know to keep up with your Auburn Tigers. Carry on Johnson and Jeff Holland will headline the main event of the week, football at Texas A&M. Kickoff is set for 11 a.m., and if you are planning on making the 12-hour trip out to College Station, you can catch the game on ESPN. Men's basketball squares off an exhibition against Barry November 2nd at 7 p.m. The game will be held in Auburn Arena and is free for all students. The Iron Bowl of Volleyball is headed to the Auburn Arena Wednesday. Auburn will take on the Crimson Tide at 7 p.m. The game will be broadcasted on SEC Network and WEGL. Taylor Russo and the women's tennis team is traveling to the Ida South Championship in Malibu, California. Number three, Equestrian hits the road to College Station Friday to take on Texas A&M. Competition is set to begin at 10 a.m. Elena Holdy and the women's golf team will hit the sandy beaches of Cabo, San Lucas, Mexico, Mexico this weekend. The Tigers were all set to play in the battle at the beach November 3rd through November 5th. Swimming goes on the road for the first time this season, traveling to South Carolina Saturday. Competition is set to begin at 10 a.m. To stay updated during this busy week in Auburn athletics, go to our website, eagleeyeauburn.com, or follow us on Twitter at eetv underscore sports. From all of us here at Sports Night in Auburn, thank you for joining us this evening. Good night. This is a place where it only takes a second to imagine your future. Grasp a new concept in class. Inspire a child's curiosity. Discover a real world solution. Seize an unexpected opportunity. There goes Davis. This is where you gain the preparation, confidence, and determination to succeed. This is Auburn. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek.